Hey there people, it's your favorite, Wheedle Twin Gender, bringing you another Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon battle video. Today we're utilizing Shedinja because Shedinja is like top 3 clickbait Pokemon, and I want to get those big views, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, we're using Shedinja, and we also feel empty on the inside, so we want to make all our opponents feel empty on the inside with stupid Shedinja strategies. So if you are a fan of Shedinja strategies, this video is the video for you. So my first opponent today isn't the most competent opponent, um, we're on the free battle spot ladder because the team we're using in this video is from prior gens like Shedinja transfer from a prior gen so we cannot use it on the rate of battle spot ladder my first opponent isn't really the most experienced as you'll see from the plays she makes in this battle but she has blaziken kiram white rcs and aegislash so i'm getting some like xy flashbacks right now with the aegislash and blaziken as my team today, you can see it's like really weird. So I have Shedinja and Wishiwashi, Zeraora, and Clefable. So a really weird team, but without further ado, let's just get into this battle. All right, so we are challenged by Hyper Heart Girl. And like I mentioned, a team preview, my opponent isn't the most experienced, as you see from her plays. But I'm still posting this battle anyways, because I'm not trying to stroke my own ego cock or anything. But I make some like unholy plays in this battle, and my like techs on the team just work flawlessly. So my opponent leads off with Kiram White, which actually has Turbo Blaze, which can ignore Shedinja's Wonder Guard. So that's really scary, and it doesn't even need Fusion Flare to hit my Shedinja. It can just Ice Beam me and Annihilate me, so that's kind of scary. So my opponent leads off with Blaziken and Kiram White. He's going to Mega Evolve with the Mega Blaziken. I mean, I say he because most people who have girl in their name are usually dudes online. <laughs> yeah, the truth hurts sometimes. So they Mega Evolve with the Blaziken and they go for the Z-Move with the Kiram White, the Dragon Z-Move. So I'm like, are you really going to Z-Move into a Shedinja? You're not Z-Moving into Shedinja, are you? I really hope you're not. So I'm assuming my opponent's going to go for the Devastating Drake into my... Uh, wishy-washy and uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to annihilate me because Kiram White has like a bajillion special attack and this is like a Z move so I'm expecting my wishy-washy to die here but we actually live because wishy-washy is really tanky and the blaze comes gonna go for the flare blitz I'm hoping they don't target into wishy-washy as thankfully they target into Shedinja as we're able to live with our focus ash I'm praying that my opponent does not burn me as thankfully they did not burn me I'm able to go for the endeavor into the Kiram White and bring him down to very low HP and now I can mimic the endeavor with my Shedinja so now my Shedinja knows the endeavor and you know Shedinja is a pretty strong user of endeavor with its one HP set I could put everything in one HP so that's pretty strong in my personal opinion wishy-washy is going to turn back into its regular form it's really tiny form and uh, now my opponent can knock out my Shinja pretty easily however we have the custap berry on wishy-washy but shadow sneak still goes before the uh custap berry which is kind of funny so shadow sneak's going to knock out kieran white so it can't knock out my Shedinja with an attack but now we're gonna go for the custap berry soak into my Shedinja before the blaze can, can knock me out with a flare blitz as my opponent's gonna go for flare blitz into Shedinja, but now we are water type so we are immune to the flare blitz so that was like the attack of the custap berry wishy-washy coming in perfectly it synergizes pretty well with its ability because like once you get the schooling off you're in custap berry range and so you, your opponent thinks you're like you're like useless but you can just go for like the you know priority soak and just you know be pretty good so i'm gonna go for doll protect here mainly because i have no idea what rcs wants to do and blaziken could have like thunder punch or something but the blaziken goes for low kick and rcs goes for shadow claw not learning not knowing what soak does i'm not too sure why i went for shadow claw there but yeah I seem to be safe in this situation because Blaziken and Arceus both could carry electric coverage or grass coverage to knock me out, but I guess they don't, so I feel safe in here with my Soak Shedinja. Down goes Wishy Washy, but Wishy Washy did all of the work. Perfect job for the Wishy Washy. So we're going to be immune to the Shadow Claw thanks to the uh, you know, Soak, and now Endeavor's going to bring Blaziken down to 1 HP, which is really nice for us. So you guys probably think the plays end here, but let me tell you guys, the plays it's not over yet for this battle there's a reason why i showed this battle i normally don't show battles against inexperienced opponents but like the way i played in this battle i was so proud of myself even though my opponent wasn't the most experienced but just the plays how flashy i was in this game i'm sorry it's just it was perfect so my opponent's gonna go for shadow claw here into zero aura as we're able to lift pretty comfortably as it's non-stab i guess my opponent's only attacking move on the rc to shadow claw because he just keeps clicking shadow claw over and over again we're able to bring rc down to one hp with the endeavor it's income is the shiny age slash all my opponent's pokemon are legit shinies of course of course but now I'm going to go for the Plasma Fist, the Chidori. And by the way, guys, fun fact. Did you know that Iron Fist, the ability Iron Fist, boosts Plasma Fist base power, but he didn't give Zero Aura Iron Fist? And he didn't even give it Fighting Type, and they could have given it Focus Punch and Plasma Fist with Iron Fist. But anyways, I went for Plasma Fist, which activates the Ion Deluge effect. And Ion Deluge makes normal type attacks into electric. So I'm able to go for the Endeavor, actually hit the Aegis Slash with the Endeavor, and bring him down to 1 HP. Now that was the play that I was like, oh my god. Because I just thought about that like at the, at the heat of the moment in the battle. I'm just like, I can 
and died for the shit the uh, Aegis Slash with my Shit Ninja just to flex my Pokemon knowledge. And now I'm gonna ally switch to avoid the Shadow Sneak into my uh, Sarah Oryx. I want to protect my furry Pokemon. We love our furry Pokemon on the Weedle Twin Needle channel. So Fling will knock out the Aegis Slash easy peasy, and we're able to defeat my opponent thanks to Endeavor. So I understand my opponent wasn't the most experienced. They probably could have double targeted my Shit Ninja turn one or my uh, Wishy Washy turn one and probably auto won the game. But like, hey, sometimes you gotta flex your teams against bad opponents because that's how YouTube content works. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the first battle and let's move on to more experienced opponents. Okay, my next opponent today, Wanda, looks like she has a really fun oh. team with the Xerneas next to my husband, Incineroar, Primal Groundon, and Mega Salamence. Keep in mind, we're on the free battle spot ladder, and there's a surprising amount of VGC players who play on the free battle spot ladder just because the championship battle spot ladder is dead because Ultra Sun and Moon is dead. And why are we still playing it? Because there's just been no new concept from Game Freak in years. Imagine playing Ultra Sun and Moon for three years straight and people being like, Joy. Weedle, how are you bored of Pokemon? Like, shut up. <laughs> Anyways, sorry, that was too real. Um, I'm utilizing Lopini, Arcanine, and Pachirisu next to Shininja. So we're making a good thumbnail for this video. But without further ado, let's get into this battle against Wanda. Who has a really fun team. As you saw from team preview, my opponent has Xerneas and Incineroar, so you can tell the opponent's trying to get the win as soon as possible using her maximum brain power with the Xerneas and Incineroar core. I respect it. I too love using my brain when I Pokemon battle. However, we took this opponent to the classroom because Shaniqua has to teach these dirty Xerneas uses a lesson because Shaniqua is the anti-hero of battle spot. Whoever uses Xerneas has to be taught a lesson. So she leads up with Xerneas and Incineroar. What a surprise is we lead up with Lopity and Shedinja. Now turn one, I'm expecting fake out, but surprise my opponent doesn't go for fake out and we're able to go for the entrainment here into Xerneas so my opponent who wants to play Geomancy turn one has to be a little bit more patient here because with the clutch ability that means she cannot use her health item so that means her power herb won't be able to be activated so she has to wait two turns for her Geomancy to activate and it's almost like it's a balanced move when you think of it like that and then my opponent's gonna go for Darkest Larry here into my Shedinja as we're able to live thanks to our Focus Sash and uh, now we can go for the uh, Mimic here into our Lopini and learn the Enchantment. So you guys are probably like, oh my gosh, Incineroar's got speed oh use, that's garbage. But no, we have the After You. So we can go for After You into Shedinja and we can go for the Enchantment here into our Lopini. So we don't even target the enemy this turn. We just target each other because that's how this strat works. We're going to give our Lopini the Wonder Guard oh, ability. Sure. And now um, Xerneas is still stuck in the you know Geomancy because we got rid of its held item. We didn't get rid of it but we made it so she can't use her health item which is arguably more you know disrespectful and now the opponent will just knock out my Shedinja here with the Darkest Lariat but that is fine because Shedinja is used for support on this team and Shedinja got off the Enchantment Wonder Guard which is all it's used for on this sort of team. So down goes our Shedinja to the Darkest Lariat which is fine because now Lopini can go for Enchantment Wonder Guard because it has the Wonder Guard ability and now I'm able to bring in my Arcanine. So I bring in my Arcanine another furry Pokemon so we have Arcanine and Cinnabar and Lopini on the field all three are very lovely furry Pokemon and Xerneas is a furry Pokemon for VGC players. I'm sure certain VGC players get off to how easy it is to use Xerneas. And Moonblast is not able to knock out our Arcanine, unfortunately, for my opponent. Is now we're able to go for the Entrainment here into the Arcanine, and we're gonna give Arcanine the Wonder Guard. So now Arcanine cannot get hit by both Incineroar and Xerneas because unless they have a way to hit Fire type super effectively, but that's right, we have Burn Up. So you can go for Burn Up here into Xerneas, do no damage, but we're gonna remove our Fire Typing, so now we have no weaknesses at all. My opponent's gonna attempt to go for the Daddy instead of Z move into us, but unfortunately for my opponent, we have the Wonder Guard, and unfortunately for us, as much as I want to get pounded into the ground by Incineroar, calm down, son. It's just a drawing. We have the Wonder Guard ability, so we cannot get pounded into the ground. I thought it'd be funny to give a Fire type of Flame Orb just to show that we are not Fire typing anymore. We are now typeless, and the only way to hit us super effectively is there. There isn't a way to hit us super effectively unless you have Soak or something. So the only way to hit us super effectively is if you have like Mold Breaker or Photon Geyser. Moon Guys Beam or Sun Seal Strike. And if you don't have those moves, then click X because you cannot touch this Arcanine. We are also burned, so we can't get toxic. So, like, yeah, it's pretty good for us. Now, the ground is going to come in here and we're going to go for Focus Punch because we're actually in Megalopony. However, we stay in regular form because I want to keep my Wonder Guard active against Fairy types. So, we're actually regular Lopony in this game. But normally, we are Megalopony and we spam Focus Punch with Wonder Guard because we can't get hit usually. And then we can go for Focus Punch just without getting flinched and do decent damage. So, Lopony can be self sufficient. But, you know, um, it's not really self-sufficient 
in this game because it's really, really weak because of Intimidate and, you know, Unstab Focus Punch and Regular Lopini is pretty lackluster attack. But still, um, my opponent cannot touch both Xerni or can't touch Lopini and Arcanine with Xerneas or Ground On. So my opponent, something off our Earth Power, we're able to be immune thanks to Wonder Guard despite the fact it would normally hit us. But because we use Burn Up, we're not able to get hit by that. And just about Salt and the Moon, we're going to go for Morning Sun here, get all of our health back and use the Ground On Sun to our advantage. And now we're going to go for Focus Punch into the Ground On, do three damage. But at this point, my opponent realizes that she cannot win and she got out cheese. Xerneas got out cheese by Shedinja and she's going to forfeit here. So that is the end of the second battle. We're able to defeat this dirty Xerneas user with Mimic Entrainment Wonder Guard Shedinja. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy. <laughs> Imagine complaining because I happen to have a similar strategy that someone else had like years ago. That's like if I complain if someone used simple much. Gardevoir, like that, no, just stop. My next opponent today, Bahara, has a very threatening team with Kyogre and Son of Roman Amoongus and Rayquaza. So a very threatening team for us to deal with. Of course, of course, we're on the free battle spot ladder. However, the opponents still like to have as much fun as seemingly possible. This time around, I'm packing Shedinja and Lopini again because I'm using a similar strat that I used in the previous battle, though it is a little bit different, has a slightly different twist. I'm also using Pachirisu because I'm role-playing as Sage and Parks, and I'm using Crabonable because Crabonable is like my favorite Gen 7 Pokemon. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into this battle against Baja Blast. Okay, I know his name isn't Baja Blast, but I want some Baja Blast. But I lead off my Lopini and my Shedinja as my opponents got to lead off with the Kyogre and the Incineroar. I don't know why he led off with Incineroar next to Kyogre, but regardless, he leads off with Incineroar and Kyogre. He's going to Primal Revert into Primal Kyogre because, like, why would you use regular Kyogre when you can use Primal Kyogre? So he's going to Primal Revert into Primal Kyogre, and I'm kind of scared of Incineroar, but I can Encore Incineroar if he does Fake Out, so it's not the biggest deal. And most Incineroars, when they see Shedinja, they usually don't go for fake out surprisingly enough. So I'm able to go for the entrainment here into the Kyogre and giving it the uh, Klutz ability. So we actually get rid of the Primordial Sea. So now it's going to stop raining, which is very nice for us. And now the Incineroar, or sorry, the Kyogre is going to go for Water Spout as he's going to, you know, not hit Shedinja because of Wonder Guard. And Water Spout will not knock out our Lopini. So now my opponent's going to go for Darkest Lariat right here into our Shedinja. I don't know why Incineroar's run Darkest Lariat right now over Knockoff. Like, I understand it's for the Daddy and the Razimu, but like, why do they run Darkest Lair over knockoff now? Who knows? I can just go for Mimic here into my Lopini, learning the Entrainment. So now I can just go for the Enchantment Wonder Guard into our Lopini with the After You again. So I can go for After You here into Shedinja. And the After You really comes in so clutch. This strat would be so much worse if the After You wasn't there. But After You makes this a lot more consistent than you would think it would actually be. Because you only need one free turn, really. And then you get the After You Entrainment off because most stuff is slower than Lopini. Unless they have like Tailwind or Trick Room. But yeah, um, we're going to be immune to all these moves thanks to our Wonder Guard. Except for Darkest Lair yet because Incineroar wants to knock out our Shedinja. So, Dejifu is going to happen and Darkest Lair will knock out our Shedinja here. So, now I go Shedinja, but that's fine because we got off the Enchantment Wonder Guard, which is all Shedinja is used for on this meme team for this battle anyway. Gonna bring a Pachirisu here and now I can just go for the Entrainment here into our Pachirisu. And Pachirisu now has the Wonder Guard and it's only weak to one typing, which is ground. And uh, unfortunately for my opponent, we also have the Magnet Rise. So we can go for Magnet Rise here and be immune to any sort of damage unless it's like Photon Geyser, Emerald Breaker, stuff like that. And now my opponent's going to go for Skull of Immune to it thanks to Wonder Guard. And my opponent is going to attempt to go for the Daddy Incineroar Z move. Some major deja vu is going to happen from the previous battle where the opponent's going to attempt to go for the Incineroar Z move. But unfortunately... <coughs> Excuse me, I just choked on Incineroar Stick there. Um, we're immune to it thanks to Wonder Guard, which is very nice for us. And now my opponent's going to switch out of his Kyogre and bring out his Amoongus. Now Amoongus actually gives this team a lot of issues. I've actually lost to Amoongus with this team before because it just spores my entire team to sleep and then like eventually I get impatient and then just forfeit because it's the free balance of the ladder and I don't care. But I gave something to Pachirisu to alleviate the problem that I have with Amoongus. I actually have Endeavor on my Lopini just in case I want to mimic it with the Shininja as opposed to mimicking uh, Entrainment. But I'm going to go for Super Fang here into the Amoongus as thankfully we don't, don't get effect spore if it has effect spore. And now I'm going to switch out my Lopini and bring out my last, which is Crabonable, because I want to show off the crab guy. I can't just let Pachirisu steal the entire show on its own. The Pachirisu could probably solve the game at this point because it has Super Fang and Toxic, and it could just like stall out the entire team, but like I don't want to do that. I want to use my crab guy, so Mega Request is going to Mega Evolve here, and the Battle Stream is going to hurt your eyeballs because the person who 
anime delta stream wants us all to suffer that's fine i'm gonna go for the follow me because i felt like follow me with wonder guard seems like really strong and i wanted to try it out because i don't feel like people have used it before on youtube so we are able to redirect the dragon's descent with our wonder guard and mao we're gonna redirect the spore and since we have safety goggles we're immune to the spore because i lost two moves before and then i'm like well i don't know what I don't even know Pinch Bear, we're given the Pachirisu some safety goggles. So Pachirisu has safety goggles and we're immune to the Dragon's Ascent thanks to our Wonder Guard. And now we can go for the Ice Hammer into Rayquaza and just annihilate it. Even, you know, it's, he's at low health anyway. I'm pretty sure it would have one-shot Rayquaza even at full health just because Carbonable isn't a slouch. So down goes Rayquaza to the Ice Hammer and now uh, the Amoongus is just going to go for the uh, Grass Knot. But we're immune to it thanks to Wonder Guards. We can just keep spamming, follow me, and the opponent cannot do anything about it because of Wonder Guards. In comes the Kyo right here and my opponent's like oh i can just water spout the crab ongable here it's not a big deal however the crab guy has a way to deal with spread moves which is the wide guard so we can go for the wide guard here and alongside wonder guard follow me and wide guard you can just like avoid all damage pretty much unless it is like mold breaker like i mentioned earlier but like the only pokemon that have mold breaker are the curum forms zekrom rushy ram and like ultra necrozma uh solgaleo and lunala and the rest of the other pokemon don't have moves like that so yeah unless they're packing like random mold breaker mons like haxorus or like mega ampharos but like that's not going to happen in any point forfeits realizing that they cannot win so that's the end of this battle we are done using this evil team because i couldn't find any more games using this team because everyone i literally like literally everybody disconnected on me using this team they all lived in washington dc because every time i got the entertainment wonder guard off they just immediately rage quit disconnected not even forfeit they just disconnected so i couldn't get any more saved battles with this team so hopefully you guys understand that and and let's move on to some more other Shedinja strategies. I know y'all see the Gulpin on my team. I know y'all see the Gulpin and you're probably like, all right, Weedle to Needle has truly lost it. Weedle has gone insane. And yes, yes, I have, but that is not what is important to people. What is important is that I'm utilizing Gulpin alongside Blissey, Shedinja, and Magirna. And yes, I'm using the very broken Magirna. I'm sure everyone gets PTSD from Magirna and overuse, but let me tell you guys, Magirna in overuse is nothing in comparison to Magirna in double battles. <laughs> I'll say that right now. But yeah, looking at my opponent's team. Oh Lord. Again. A fucking game. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. As you can see, my opponent pretty much has the same copy pasting from the previous opponent, except they have Xerneas over Kyogre for wow. that nice, delicious, nutritious variety in the meta. We love variety on the Weedle Tweedle channel, but without further ado, let's get into this battle against this, uh, I think that's Japanese. I might be Korean. I'm, I barely even know English, so like, leave me alone. Alrighty, so we are challenged by this evil battle spot player who thinks they can just automatically win the game with their Xerneas and Rayquaza combination, but let me tell you guys, Magirna is on a whole other level that like Xerneas and Rayquaza can't even keep up with Magirna. Like this battle is going to show you guys that you should be grateful that Magirna is not allowed in VGC because Magirna is absolutely ridiculous and it's probably going to be removed in Sword and Shield so we should be grateful for that and we're going to use it now before it's removed in Sword and Shield. So yeah my opponent's going to lead off with Rayquaza and Incineroar probably because that like Xerneas doesn't do well against Magirna and Shedinja so they probably were afraid of leading Xerneas which is definitely understandable so they lead off with like, Rayquaza instead which is, you know, equally as brainless in my personal opinion. And my opponent's gonna set up the Delta Stream here with the Mega Rayquaza. And now they're gonna choose to go for the Fake Out here into the Magirna because Magirna can definitely offensively pressure the Mega Rayquaza, which is definitely true because Sword Cannon will annihilate Mega Rayquaza. My opponent's gonna choose to go for Drag as a Sun here into the Shedindu, which is a little bit overkill in my personal opinion, but we do have the Focus Sash where we're able to live here. And y'all probably thought me using Gulpin made me insane, but like, we are actually insane because we are about to commit Final Gambit. Oh. That's right, we are using Final Gambit Shininja. In a competitive game, like we are basically transcending Pimp Knight right now by using Final Gambit Shininja. So down goes Shininja to the Final Gambit and Magirna is going to get a Soul Heart Boost because you get a Soul Heart Boost even if your own allies die. Like how is that remotely balanced game for you? Tell me, how is that balanced? Whenever we're going to bring in Blissey, you're probably expecting Minimize, but no. We have Choice Scarf Copycat, so you can copycat the Final Gambit. And Blissey has the highest HP stat in the game, so Final Gambit off Blissey is a little strong so yeah down goes bliss to the final gambit and we're gonna get another soul heart boost with the magirna so now we're at plus the special attack and we're not done yet because incinero is also gonna go down and we're gonna get another I'm soul heart one. boost and magirna's at plus three special attack without needing to lift a finger 
And now the request is gonna go for the earth power as we're able to live and we're gonna activate our weakness policies. So now we're at plus five special attack and now we set up the trick room. So game like, over. how is that remotely balanced game freak? Like this strat right here is on a whole other level. Like realistic by fan Friday could never. But now we're gonna break and gulp and y'all probably are like, I like the final game of meme, but Weedle, what's Gulpin supposed to do on this team? My Gulpin's actually really, really slow under Trick Room and it actually underspeeds the Moongus, which is a pretty impressive feat. And we're gonna go for the Z Destiny Bond here with my Gulpin to redirect any attacks targeted at the Magirna, because a plus five special attack Magirna is obviously gonna get targeted over uh, uh, Gulpin. So my opponent's gonna go for Spore here into my Magirna, but we're able to redirect it thanks to the uh, Z Destiny Bond, which works like Follow Me. And now we can go for the Ice Beam here into the Amoongus as we're able to definitely one shot it. So yeah, down goes the Amoongus and we're going to get the uh, final Slow Heart Boost here. So now we are at plus six special attack with the Magirna. And my opponent's gonna try to go for the Earth Power here into Magirna, but because of Z Destiny Bond, we're able to redirect it. And Gulpin's gonna take the Earth Power from Magirna. Down goes Gulpin. And Gulpin just soloed Mega Rayquaza. Like a little blob just soloed freaking the God Dragon. Like, how does that even happen? Like, yeah. But, anyways, my opponent's gonna bring in her last, which is the Xerneas. And Xerneas inherently gets countered by Magirna. And y'all probably thought I was gonna like heart swap the Xerneas at Team Preview, but no. This is a whole you know, next level strat right here with the Magirna. My opponent's gonna try to stall out Trick Room with Protect, but like, even if you stall Trick Room, I highly doubt Moonblast will kill me from this range of health. And even after Geomancy plus four Dazzling Gleam will annihilate you because you have your own Fairy Aura. So Xerneas is gonna take a plus six Fairy Aura boosted Dazzling Gleam, get a taste of his own medicine, down goes the Xerneas, and we're able to defeat my opponent thanks to Final Gambit Shedinja memes. So my opponent has to hold that out for the rest of her life. Like, I don't think my opponent will ever forget this battle because like how do you even lose to final game with Shedinja, Choice Scarf Blissey, Gulpin, and Magirna? Okay, I know Magirna's incredibly broken and the only reason why I won this game, but my opponent still lost to final game with Shedinja, Gulpin, and Choice Scarf Blissey. Like you gotta hold that out. I'm sorry. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle video and let's move on to the last battle in this video. Alrighty, my final opponent in this video is going to be Yvonne, who is packing a dancer meme team, and that's pretty cool to see because you don't really get to see dancer being used much anymore. I, I think my first double battling team in Gen 7 was a dancer team as well, so I'm a pretty big fan of dance, so it's cool to see dancer still being used in 2019. So my opponent has a Oracorio, Lilligant, and Volcarona, pretty obvious indicators that we are facing dancer. As my team today, I'm also packing a Lilligant alongside Shedinja, Togedemaru and Gliscor, so a pretty odd team composition, but without further ado, let's get into the spot. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are challenged by Yvonne, and I'm pretty excited about this battle because I'm a pretty big fan of dancer teams. I uh, recently recorded, okay not recently, I recorded like a video with my friend Eel Bandit like a month ago using a dancer team, so I do love me some dancer meme teams. I'll probably leave that video in like the end screen or like a those like YouTube card things or whatever if you want to watch that so anyways i'm gonna switch up my shedinja turn one because i misled because i'm not the perfect player and i was in autopilot mode sorry guys i'm not the perfect player i know i pretend to be but i'm not sorry but anyways i'm gonna go for the z move here with my lilligan y'all probably like what's the lilligan gonna go for here and we're actually going to go for the z role play here into my token Maru, and we are going to learn or not even learn, but we're going to obtain the sturdy ability. And my opponent's Lilligan has the same idea. He also has a roleplay Lilligan. So we got Mirror Mash versus roleplay Lilligan. Like, what are the odds of that happening? Like, who? Just imagine, like, going on a free battle spot and getting Mirror Mash versus a roleplay Lilligan. Like, like that that will never happen again. <laughs> but that was pretty funny. Um, both me and my opponent had a mutual respect for each other at three bolts all the roleplay Lilligan. My opponent's going to go for a double feather dance here because of the dancer ability. So now my token Maru is never a to do damage ever again but that's fine because togedemaru is not meant to do damage on this team we're gonna pull a hard switch here into my shedinja for a pretty obvious reason if you couldn't tell already we're able to go for the entrainment here into my shedinja and this is like probably the easiest way to get sturdy onto shedinja so now our shedinja has a sturdy ability so you guys can't say i didn't use sturdy shedinja in this video my opponent's gonna go for quiver dance here with his elegant so it's a recorder who can go for quiver dance but it doesn't really matter because 
I already have the sturdy setup, so unless they have like Leech Seed or a status move, they cannot kill my Shinja no matter what. Or if they have Mold Breaker or something, that could also work as well. But I don't know if my opponent has that on their team. I feel like if they didn't, they would forfeit already, but we'll see. My opponent's gonna go for Revelation Dance here as we're able to live with Illigant when the opponent's Illigant's gonna go for Revelation Dance. And that's a grass type Revelation Dance, so you know, it doesn't really do that much damage as Illigant's able to live. And now I decided to be kind of disrespectful here. Go for the grass knight into my own Shedinja just to activate my own sturdy just to be because I, I, I can't touch Lilligant or Oricorio after Quiver Dances anyway, so I may as well just target myself. I would do the most damage in that way, right? But anyway, so my opponent's gonna go for Quiver Dance again, and then you know, the Oricorio's gonna go for Quiver Dance, and narrating Tancer battles is kind of annoying because it's kind of self-explanatory. Like you kind of see the Pokemon just standing moves over and over again, but yeah, I have to talk over it every time. So my opponent's gonna go for Revelation Dance here into my uh Lilligant which will knock me out at plus two special attack so down goes my Lilligant and then my opponent's Lilligant is doing a Dancer the Revelation Dance so Dancer you just spam like a billion moves a turn it's kind of annoying to keep up with it but that's why Dancer is so fun because you can use up to four moves in one turn which is like super sick in my opinion if you're not facing Sturdy Shedinja because if you're facing Sturdy Shedinja it can just take hits forever because it can't get knocked out unless you have what I mentioned earlier like 20 times in this video like the Mold Breaker moves Mold Breaker Pokemon or just status shits in general but I could have packed Tapu Fini on this team if I wanted to, but I realized that no one on free battle spot actually uses like toxic status. Everyone just spam spore with the Moongus. That's the only status move people use on battle spot, so I had nothing to worry about in that situation. So my opponent's gonna go for Quiver Dance again because I, I guess he just doesn't care about the Sturdy Shedinja. I assume he has some way to deal with it in the back that I haven't like seen yet, so that's why he hasn't forfeited yet. Or maybe he hasn't forfeited because he saw the uh, roleplay Lilligan and just, you know. We, we had a bro moment there, and then after, we're just like, all right, we're not going to forfeit on each other. We're just going to play this game out like real men. So I guess that's what we're going to do. Anyway, so I put one to go for double feather dance here into my glide score instead of just knocking me out. I don't know why, but now my glide score is unable to do damage, but that's fine because glide score tries to go for guillotine, misses, but now my shin is just going to mimic the guillotine. And I was going to mimic Endeavor again, but I'm like, I already mimicked Endeavor, and I want to mimic guillotine because I just want to do it for fun. So my shin actually has mind reader, which guarantees your next move will hit against the opponent you target with mind reader so that is why we have oko moves <clears throat> on my shininja also because sturdy shininja just spamming oko moves i just found would be kind of funny to try out so my opponent's gonna try to go for pedal dance into my shininja and well he didn't i, I assume he didn't target into shininja because pedal dance targets randomly but he targets into shininja doesn't do damage because you know of sturdy and then my opponent's gonna go for the flying z move here which is obviously targeting into my glide score i hope because i, I hope my opponent realizes by now that if he targets shininja it just won't work so my opponent's gonna go for Super Sonic Sky Strike here with his uh, Oracorio, and he's gonna Super Sonic Sky Strike into my Glide Score, and that will easily obliterate me because that like plus two or plus three special attack. My Glide Score actually carries the Focus Sash because it's the only Pokemon on the scene that doesn't have Sturdy. So I'm like, I guess we're giving Glide Score the Focus Sash. So it's kind of weird that Glide Score actually has Focus Sash, but it makes sense because the rest of my Pokemon on my team either you know role play Sturdy or they just get Sturdy through entrainment. So like it just makes sense to me in my personal opinion. But anyways, we're gonna go for Faint here. My Glide Score has Faint just because you can protect versus Mind Reader plus Oko move. So Faint is supposed to be used to break protect so your oak can still go through but obviously they can also switch out but like they still have to have a 30 percent chance of taking uh, the Oko move, like it still has a 30% chance to hit them, so it's not like the end of the world. And the Oko move is just a meme anyway. Like, obviously, it's better to mimic like Endeavor or something, but like, we always just do the uh, less optimal play on the Weedle Swing Needle channel because that's how we work in Pokemon. But, anyways, my opponent's gonna go for Revelation Hits again, and as you can see, he's dirty. It just doesn't matter. Like, you can hit me with as many moves as you want. He's actually confused here, which is kind of funny, and he's gonna hit himself in confusion, so he's unable to go for the Dancer move. And now we're gonna go for Guillotine here into the Lilligan and knock him out. I guess my opponent didn't care enough to switch out, or I guess he had a million boosts already, so he's like, fuck it, you can just have my Lilligan, which is fair enough, fair enough. But now the Oracorio is getting whittled down by Toxic. Toxic on this uh, Shedinja is just so good, because even if you don't get your Oko move stuff, you can still just run Toxic and just Toxic style everything, and since you have Sturdy, like, they just can't kill you, so you just eventually win, right? But now he brings in Marshadow, and I'm really, like, I'm really excited to see what Marshadow is supposed to do on this team. And as you see here, well, after we eat our lychee beer, which is not what I wanted to happen, by the way, as you see why in just a moment, my opponent's gonna go for roleplay here into the Oracorio. So he's packing roleplay on Marshadow and Lilligant. So he's, he likes to use roleplay 
I do love role playing myself. I'm gonna go for fling. I try to go for the fling lychee berry into my shoot engine for obvious reasons, but of course, he hits my token mower and puts me, you know, in range to eat my, you know, lychee berry. So unfortunately, I could not fling the lychee berry at my own shoot engine, but that's not the end of the world because, like, Shininja isn't really, it doesn't need to do damage in this sort of strategy because it has sturdy, it could just eventually kill stuff, right? But anyways, you're gonna go for Shadow Sneak here into Marshadow. I should have Shadow Sneak into Oricorio, but honestly, I just wanted to see what the Marshadow wanted to do. Like, at this point, I knew I just couldn't lose because I have sturdy Shininja set up and I don't see my opponent having a status move on the Steam. I don't think Spectral Thief goes through Wonder Guard either, so I feel like I'm good to go in the situation. And yeah, my opponent actually has Copycat, which is pretty cool to see. I, I, I we saw Copycat earlier in the video with you know Copycat Final Gambit, so it's cool to see someone else using Copycat on Battle Spot and stuff like that. I'm glad I'm not the only person on Battle Spot trying to use memes and gimmicks and shit like that. But anyways, the Marshadow is almost dead from poison. It's definitely in range of Shadow Sneak at this point, and my opponent's last is the Volcarona. And Volcarona could potentially carry will o -Wisp, so he could have just definitely been debating me the entire time and just will o -Wisp me here and knock me out. But I somehow doubt that. I feel like he would have done that earlier if he did have that on his team. So he goes for Shadow Ball into my, uh, my, into my Shininja, inactivates our weakness policy, which is, you know, pretty nice for us. And now Volcarona is going to go for Fiery Dance, and that is going to also activate weakness policy if we still had it. But unfortunately, it was already activated, and now um, our Shadow is going to go for Fiery Dance as well. So the Dance is definitely coming in clutch. If I didn't have Sturdy Shininja, this battle probably would have ended a long time ago because I would have been overwhelmed by offensive moves. But because we have Sturdy Shininja, Sturdy is probably activated like 20 times in this battle by itself just because of how many attacks my opponent's been throwing out because of the Dancer. We're going to go for the Mind Reader here into the Volcarona because it's obvious Marshadow is going to die from poison the next turn. And my opponent's just going to go for Shadow Ball here. And honestly, like any other opponent I feel like would have forfeited way earlier in the battle. But because my opponent and I both packed Roleplay Lilligan, we just had a bro moment and we just didn't forfeit. We were just like, all right, we're going to play this game out and whoever wins, wins, man. So I guess he just can't get past the stupid Shininja because Shininja is just so, it, it's such a dumb Pokemon. Like it's so broken or so useless. It, it's either one or the other. And that's what I love about Shininja. There's not many Pokemon that have so much inconsistency inconsistency in their kit where there can either be like untouchable gods or just absolutely useless like that's my favorite part of Shin ninja but anyways we're gonna go for the mind reader guillotine into full corona that will easily knock out full corona and yeah my opponent could have protected there but i guess at this point he realizes the game is over as for shadows is gonna get knocked out by the toxic and we're able to defeat my opponent with sturdy Shin ninja so yes here is your sturdy Shin ninja to all of you guys who like watching sturdy Shin ninja though i do think that battle right there was pretty boring to watch because it was pretty much an inevitable outcome that I was gonna win because my opponent didn't have a status move but still it was a fun battle to show nonetheless because we got to face Dancer and we got Mirror Mash versus a roleplay Lilligan so I felt like this battle is worth showcasing for sure. But yeah, I'd say that was a pretty successful Shedinja strategy video. We got to utilize Shedinja in a wide variety of ways, and I bet there was at least one strategy in this video that none of you even saw coming or even thought of before. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the Shedinja strategy video. And if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more of this kind of content on my channel, be sure to smash that like button or dislike button to let me know if you still do enjoy my Wi-Fi battle content or you just exclusively subscribe to me because of my showdown content because there's a lot of people who only sub to me for my showdown salt content. So let me know in the comments that you do still enjoy these Wi-Fi battle videos. And also be sure to leave a bunch of comments on whatever is on your mind, like criticism you have with the video, or if you want to express your anger with me and my lack of upvotes, feel free to flame me in the comment section as well or roast me. Feel free to post your awful meme comments with people that people only post for upvotes pretty much. Or whatever your favorite shit industry strategy in this video was, just be sure to leave a comment. I read all of my comments and respond most of the time so if you have any feedback on this video at all or any questions you want to ask me do not hesitate to leave a comment because it really helps me out and i need to stay relevant i haven't uploaded in two months and i need the algorithm to be tickled badly so definitely tickle the algorithm for me if you want to help out your homegirl shaniqua and i sincerely apologize for not uploading um i understand a lot of you guys are really frustrated with me but the main reasoning behind that is because my mental health has been at the lowest point it has been in my entire life, I'd say. I don't think I've been in a good enough mindset to really make content. And I didn't want to like disappoint you guys with low quality forced content because you deserve better than that. And I didn't want to make content at my lowest point. And I'm not really, I'm not going to lie to you guys. You probably think that my mental health has improved a bunch, but it really hasn't improved much at all. 
it's more of like my outlook on life has changed a bit and I don't expect like empathy or anything because I don't really expect you guys to care but I figured you guys definitely deserve an explanation on why I haven't been posting content it may not be a good explanation but it's still an explanation nonetheless but no worries I'm gonna try my best to post more content and get my channel back on track before Sword and Shield releases so look forward to that and more content from me in the near future because I need to revive my channel before Sword and Shield. And I also can't afford therapy right now and my real life job doesn't pay enough to cover it on top of living expenses and bills. So yeah, don't be an adult. And also look forward to more content in a sale or ad block so I can afford therapy. And I haven't gone back to therapy in almost two months. So please send help or money. Anyways, anyways, I'm just kidding about the money part unless you're a rich sugar dad, then feel free to help me out. But anyways, which Pokemon would you guys like to see me utilize in my future uploads? Feel free to include the moveset details and EV spreads if you want in the comment. And if you see any Pokemon suggestions or a moveset you would like to see me utilize as well, be sure to upvote their comment and reply to that comment and being like, Weedle, use that set right now or else unsubscribe, you know, stuff like that. That gives me more comments. So just leave a comment just, just leave comments, okay? That's basically all I'm asking. And I'm trying to put together some more teams for future videos. So any suggestions that may spark an idea in my head are very much appreciated. And with that, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, feel free to join my Discord server. I'll link will be in the description. And if you want to see more of me, feel free to follow me on Twitter as well. If you want to see some more memes slash sneak peeks of my future content or depression tweets I post when I feel sorry for myself, then delete an hour later because it's embarrassing and that's what happens when mentally unstable people use Twitter. So yeah, feel free to follow me on Twitter if that does interest you. But yeah, that'll be it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. If you watched till this point of the video, be sure to leave a comment saying that Shaniqua and Incineroar is my favorite Pokemon couple. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. And thank you again for having so much patience with me and my inconsistent uploading ass. I love you all very, very much. And I really don't deserve your patience and support. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. And I'll check you guys sometime soon.